How's it going, everybody? It is I, Vigilai. Welcome back to some more Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi Battles versus Kite over here in the PU tier. So, just gonna lead off with my Colbaberry Mesprit with max HP, max defense. We got Stealth Rocks on this, and with Psychic U-Turn and Healing Wish. So, he leads off with the Frost Last, gets a nice Thunder Wave off, paralyzes me, and unfortunately, I get full paired right there. That is my worst nightmare. As now, he has the Confuse Ray, a bunch of hacks going on my Mesprit, and unfortunately Mesprit is not going to be able to do anything because I get full parrot again. So that kind of sucks. It's going to be a little bit annoying to try and break through, but I'm still going to try and break through as now he brings in the Skunk Tank, which could Pursuit Trap me, but I do have Cold Berry, and unfortunately I do hit myself in Confusion right there, 30% chance, so... Unforked. But hey, I switch out and he doesn't pursue, so that's pretty nice. But unfortunately, he goes for Poison Jab as a switch in Crabomble, and I get poisoned right there. And that does a nice chunk because he is Life Orb. So at least it's not a 2 hit KO, and I can maybe get a hit off with Crabomble, but at the same time, I don't want to take another Poison Jab. So I go into Lycanroc over here. As unfortunately, he goes for the Play Rough, and uh, that will do a lot more than Poison Jab since I would resist Poison Jab. But at least I take the Play Rough. And then he has the Sucker Punch, but I take that as well, and then I fire back with the Lycanian Z. And this should easily one-shot the Skunk Tank, and I should not take Aftermath, because Aftermath, I guess, doesn't affect uh, Z-moves or whatever, since Z-moves, I guess, are not contact moves. No, they're just like Iron Barbs and Rough Skin and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I guess keep my Lycan Rock and don't lose it to the Aftermath right there. So that Skunk Tank is doing some nice uh, damage to my team with its Life Orb, but uh, down it goes. So... Now in comes Frost Last. I'm thinking this is going to be a Focus Sash Frost Last since it was lead, and most Frost Lasts that are leads are Focus Sash. So I'm going to go into my Rapidash as uh, I'm pretty sure the Frost Last wants to maybe go for just maybe a Shadow Ball or an Ice Beam. Fires off an Ice Beam. Rapidash can take either or. I am Choice Scarf Rapidash and I go for the Flare Blitz. Unfortunately, it is going to be Focus Sash. And uh, if it did get a Curse Body, that could be a little bit annoying, but at least Struggle does hit Ghost types. So Frostlass does hit me with a Thunder Wave. Now I am paralyzed and I'm slower than Frostlass. And then it hits me with a Confused Ray. So gotta hope Rapidash kind of breaks through over here. Because if it doesn't, then uh, it might go down to an Ice Beam if I hit myself in the face with Confusion. But luckily I break through and I get to knock out Frostlass. And luckily no uh, Cursed Body. So that's pretty cool. Don't get to struggle. So now in comes the Lugs Ray. Lugs Ray. I am actually thinking I could be faster than it since Lugs Ray is pretty slow. But unfortunately... I don't break through full para, and yeah, I just get full parried right there, and then he knocks me out with the wild charge, and definitely that critical hit mattered. Uh, every critical hit matters, we all know this, so. Anyways, turns out to be Flame Orb, so he's probably Guts, and that's some power right there, but I decided to go into my max defense Mesprit as I'm hoping that I can maybe get some rocks up, as uh, rocks can break any folks' sash if he does have that, and just whittle down his team as well, pretty nicely. So he actually switched into the Absol, so. Uh, at least he didn't want to hit me with a facade. And then he turns out to be Sunny Day Absol, which is interesting. I did not expect that, but pretty cool. And also Shiny Absol is uh, pretty cool as well. I like its colors. And yeah, I just go and U-turn into my Scyther. Now I just U-turn out and down goes Absol. So no Sucker Punch, no Swords Dance. That's a interesting Absol. I'm, I'm wondering if it was like Fire Blast or something like that. Like a special attack in Absol. I don't know. But either way, down it goes. And I guess it was for the Blossom, because I do believe Blossom's ability is Chlorophyll. And I guess he just wanted to have Chlorophyll uh, Blossom and have it really fast. But personally, I like to just run Quiver Dance, Bulky Blossom. That's what I ran before with Giga Dream, like Hidden Power Ice. It's pretty dope with uh, its bulk. Like, it actually has decent stats. So it has, it has Petal Dance and knocks out my Mesprit right there, which is fine since uh, it's locked into me Petal Dance. It's like an Outrage and then it confuses you or a Thrash. So I have Scyther to resist it four times and I can go for the Area Lace. But like I said, Blossom has that bulk and it lives the Area Lace on a sliver of HP. So uh, it's confused. It can hit itself in the face, but unfortunately uh, it breaks through and hits me with a Sleep Powder. And unfortunately Scyther is going to be you know, sleeping like a baby. And that is 75% accuracy, we all know 75% accuracy means 100% accuracy, right? No? Okay. Well, uh, he does have the Hidden Power. I'm guessing that's Hidden Power Fire. That does a nice chunk. I don't think he's running Hidden Power Ice. I ran Hidden Power Ice, but it makes sense to run Hidden Power Fire with Sun. But I'm kind of just hoping the Sun goes away so that I can outspeed the Blossom and just hit it with a nice Aerial Ace and hope that Scyther can wake up. But nope, that is unfortunate. Uh, sun is still up, and he outspeeds me, and I don't wake up, and knocks me out with the Hidden Power Fire. But at least Sun is gone, so now I can bring in my Lycanroc, 
and actually I have brought Krabominal, I guess, since I was kind of hoping Krabominal can live a Hidden Power Fire, but nope, he has the Moon Blast, and that will launch out my Krabominal, so I was like, okay, well, now I'm going to bring in Lycanroc over here. And unfortunately, Krabominal sometimes just gets one shot a lot of times, but when you bring it in on the right mod, it can just tear up a team. Like, sometimes you don't have a switch into a Krabominal with Ice Hammer or Close Combat. It's pretty nice. Stab moves and a uh, good attack. So, anyways, brought in Lycanroc over to Stone Edge. He switched down to Luxray, which is pretty nice, because now I don't have to hit a Drill Run on this. I can just go for a Cell Rock. And also allows me, if I do miss Stone Edge, I have another chance to hit a move. Since Stone Edge, we all know, uh, we call it Stone Miss. It always misses. So in came the Manectric. I was actually really scared this was Choice Scarf, but luckily it's not. Maybe it was like Choice Specs or something, um, or even Life Orb. But Choice Scarf would have been able to outspeed me and just knock me out like a rock, and I'd probably just lose the game right there, maybe. Um, since my last mod, I think, was Savali Water, and uh, it definitely won't beat Manectric Choice Scarf with Thunderbolt. So, yeah, GG to Kites. Luckily, I did not miss my Stone Edges, so that's always uh, a good thing, because when you miss Stone Edge, uh, it's just a bad time. So, versus Smasher over here, he looks like he's running Sticky Webs with Smeargle, maybe Spikes or Stealth Rock on there, and then the rest, probably just all offense is what I'm guessing. Whenever I see a Smeargle, I'm thinking, all right, hyper offense, because it wouldn't make two cents to run Sticky Webs with no offense, because <laughs> uh, then your bulky Pokemon are already slow, and they're probably not even going to outspeed most Pokemon with Sticky Webs, so... Anyways, I lead off a of Scyther, it looks pretty nice versus his team. I can U-turn on the Smeargle, so that's the plan. And, uh, but he let off a Skunk Tank, so that's pretty interesting. I just go for Sword Dance on that guy. Unfortunately, I get Poison Jabbed and Poisoned. Uh, but at least I do have Eviolite, and I can take two of those. But he does have Sucker Punch, does a little bit of chip. I go for an Aerial Ace, and that is one bulky Skunk Tank as it takes that, and has Black Sludge, so it regains a little bit of HP. So I'm going to go for the Roost, as Roost is my best play, since it negates Sucker Punch. I have to attack him for Sucker Punch to hit me. And I can live whatever Skunk Tank wants to go for, unless it's going to be packing, I don't know, Critical Hit Fire Blast and its Max Special Attack. But looking at it, it's, you know, it's a physical attacker. So, I go for another Roost, just to get max HP, and just in case he goes for another Sucker Punch, I want to get as much HP as possible. But he actually packs the Taunts, so I can't go for any more Roosts, so that's fine. I can't go for Swords Dance. I was going to attack him either way the next turn, as uh, he expected that, because he goes for the Sucker Punch, and I go for Aerial Ace. And plus, I wasn't going to switch out. So, I'd rather just knock out Skunk Tank and take the damage from Aftermath and Poison. So down goes Skunk Tank. Uh, I'm pretty weakened, but he actually brought in Smeargle, so I get to just Aerial Ace that. I'm pretty sure it's Focus Sash, as it is. Most Smeargles are Focus Sash, to just get up at least one Hazard. And uh, usually they're leads too, so I'm surprised he didn't lead off with it, because they usually just like to maybe nuzzle or spore or something. So, go for another Aerial Ace. And also my plan was to U-turn into Rapid Ash, because my Rapid Ash does have Sleep Talk in its move pool. I don't know. I just felt like Sleep Talk could be a cool thing to have on some Rapid Ash, just in case I run into some Spore or Sleep Powder mods, I guess. Because, like, I don't know, Lilligans could be annoying with Sleep Powder. But, uh, yeah. I brought a Mesprit as, um, you know, he brought him on Chan. He tries to hit me, but Mesprit is literally going to wall the crap out of him on Chan unless you're, like, throw a chop banded, and that could do a lot. But I am still Corberry, and I can take it. So I go for U-Turn, because I expect Absol maybe to want to come in, but he brought in Corsola. It's not bringing Savali, as I do just want to go for the defog and get rid of the webs right there. And uh, luckily I still have my Scyther, as Scyther uh, is on a sliver of HP, but maybe I can heal Wish it back up, and Scyther can do some work. Because that's why I really like Mesprit with Healing Wish. It can just bring back a Pokemon that's so weakened in its status, and uh, it can do work again. So he actually has Toxic on the Corsola. That's going to be a little bit annoying. Corsola is actually pretty bulky with Regenerator, and I think it has Recover and Smooth Pool as well. It's like a kind of bad, I guess, talk specs, you know, rock and water, not the best typing, but, I mean, I guess in the PU tier it can work, I've used that before, and I've even used an offensive for Sola, so, anyways, I actually went for Departing Shot right there, because I kind of expect him to switch out, maybe if you watched some of my other wife battles with the Silvali, I had Grass Pledge on this, so I was thinking that maybe he would predict that, but I guess he didn't see it, so I was like, okay, now I can fire off the Grass Pledge, Grass Pledge is going to be 80 base power, it's a special attack you move. You don't really see that ever in competitive, I would say. So I guess maybe he doesn't expect it. So I go for the defog, try and get rid of the rocks, but he just spams rocks right there. So that's a smart play on his part. 
as uh, he can literally just do that and let Toxic knock me out. And he'll always get the rocks up since he's slower than me. So I'm like, all right, let me go for the Grass Pledge. Hopefully knock it out since it's four times weak to Crusoli, but Crusoli is really bulky. Maybe he's running a lot of special defense, and it lives it right there. Um, so I have to go for a Surf over here just because, it, it, just in case he switches out, um, I can knock it out. And uh, pretty much it can knock out Crusoli from that range. So Surf was my best play because I don't want him to switch out into something that could easily take a Grass Pledge. So in comes him on Chan, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to switch out. But unfortunately, he has Pursuit. I'm like, oh, well, then you don't see that too much on uh, him on Chan. So I get Pursuited right there, which I never really see. But now I can't defog away the rocks, and Scyther is not going to appreciate that. And Rapidash is not going to appreciate that either. So anyways, I uh, brought a Mesprit, and I go for a U-turn, expecting him to want to go into Absol. Uh, and I expect him to be scared of a Psychic, but nope, he just bulks up right in my face. So I was like, okay, then. Uh, so I brought in Lycanroc since I don't want any other of my Pokemon to take the Stealth Rock damage, and then I'm just going to go right back into my Mesprit as Mesprit. Um, we'll take anything at plus one hit, which can do. And he just fires off the Bullet Punch and gets a crit right there, which is fine since I take that like a champ. You know, defense at Mesprit, so bulky. So he goes for Pursuit, activates my Culverberry, yum 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 delicioso, and does absolutely nothing. And I hit him with a Psychic, but Hitmonchan is going to live that since Hitmonchan is pretty bulky, especially defensively. Maybe if I was Psy Shock, I could maybe knock him out, but Psychic is just generally better because it can hit more mons um, for more damage. So he hits me with another Pursuit, I live that, and I knock him out the Psychic. So that's pretty good for me. Hitmonchan is gone. But my Mesprit was weakened a lot, and that kind of sucks. So in comes Absol, and he's just going to knock me off the knockoff. I can't switch since um, I'm going to get knocked out by Stealth Rocks, and I don't have a good switch into Absol either way. So I bring in Kabottle. Maybe I could have sacked Scyther, but Mesprit would go down to the Stealth Rocks either way, so it's like a sack either way. So unfortunately, Kabottle does nothing the second battle because it just gets one shot if I play rough and critical hit it. I don't know if that crit mattered. Probably didn't since the Life Orb Absol, and it's really strong. So I'm pretty sure Kerbana will get knocked out. But it was max HP, if that matters. I don't know. So anyways, brought in like a rock. It outspeeds Absol, and I'm just going to go for the Z move. Luckily, he didn't click Sucker Punch. Maybe he doesn't have that. So um, another time, like rock is going to do some work with Splintered Storm Shards. I think that's what it's called. Storm Shard Raid. I don't know. But um, yeah, this last mod is going to be some Mesprits, And all I really need to do is just hit Stone Edge on that Mesprit. Put it in range for a Flare Blitz from my Rapid Ash, and it should be game. So, gotta hit a Stone Edge. <laughs> and we all know this. When you rely a game on Stone Edge, it is gonna miss. So, misses the first Stone Edge, but I can live a one Psychic. But can I hit the second Stone Edge? Nope. Miss that second Stone Edge, and down goes my Lycanroc to the second Psychic. So, I'm like, alright, Rapid Ash, you need to hit this Flare Blitz and then win the game. So, that's all I really need to do is live one Psychic. Uh, so I hit the Flare Blitz, and uh, I think I actually burned the Mesprit too, which is interesting. Uh, I think it's like a 10% chance to burn it. But unfortunately, Mesprit knocks me out with the Psychic right there, and that is going to be game. So if only Lycra hit that Dank Stone Edge, man, it could have won me the game. So maybe I could have saved my uh, Z move, but I was really scared of missing against Absol, and if I missed against Absol, I think I would have just lost the Sucker Punch if it had it, because it could Sucker Punch Rapid Ash. And Maybe knock me out, and then I get knocked out by recoil from Flare Blitz. So, dang it, Lycanroc. rock. Put some glasses on, but hey, that's fine. That's the game we play. So next up, we guys versus Turtles. He has an interesting team. He has Mask Rain, so I'm thinking Sticky Webs on that. Maybe Stealth Rock, Agron, or Caracosta. Caracosta. Chat out maybe Specs or Life Orb. Uh, Float Cell. He brought like a special attacky one that was like Life Orb or something. And Ninja. Um, not really too big of a deal since I do have a lot of Pokemon that can hit it for damage. I have Rapid Ash, Flare Blitz, I have Scyther, Aerial Ace, I have Flycanroc with, uh, you know, it's Rock Boost. So I have three Pokemon that can do a lot of damage to it, so I'm not really too scared of it. So I lead off a of Scyther as he leads off with the uh, Float Cell, just in case he let off of something else, I could U-turn on it, but nope. Don't want to U-turn on a Sy uh, Float Cell since it can Hydro Pump me, or Ice Beam me. So I brought in my Savali. Could take anything really, and uh, he reveals he's life orb. So he actually goes for the taunt right there. Maybe expecting me to go for a departing shot, but nope, I'm just gonna click the grass pledge, do some big boy damage to the float cell. Unfortunately, don't knock it out. And yeah, I guess he just hard switch right there into Masquerade. And Masquerade will easily take a grass pledge, but I go for the surf, since surf will knock out float cell from that range and just covers him switching. So that's why it's good to uh, switch up your move and not click the same move twice when your uh, not very effective move can knock it out either way. So he goes for the Quiver Dance right off the bat. I just decided to click Surf. If he has Energy Ball, that kind of sucks. I kind of expect him to maybe have Energy Ball. 
Uh, you never really know. Sometimes mass screen just have like bug buzz and hydro pump. That's why I like to run. Uh, but I go into my rapid dash either way because I don't think he's gonna click hydro pump and I can take any plus one and I outspeed the mass screen. So I go for the wild charge right there, mainly because I don't want to go for flare blitz and allow Karakosta want to come in. Because if that happens, Kirikosa could be a little bit annoying if it just gets a freeze to shell smash. And I'd rather just hit it with a wild charge. But that doesn't invite the Shed Ninja, and I guess he kind of expected me to be Choice Scarf right there. Since, because I outsped the plus one Mask Rain too. So he knows I'm Choice Scarf. So he, that allows Shed Ninja to just come in for free and, you know, not be scared of any fire move. So I brought in Scyther, as Scyther can easily Aerial Lace him, but he does have Toxic and Protect. So that's going to be a little bit annoying, since uh, he can just rack up some toxic damage on my Pokemon, which, hey, I gotta respect that. I like to set a lot, since, you know, I like toxic protect on my mods and subs too. But at least uh, Shin Ninja can't substitute, because it only has one HP. <laughs> so, he brought an Aggron. I expected that, because I went for the U-turn. I didn't think he would stay in and take an Aerial Ace. He's probably Folk Sash, Shin Ninja, most Shin Ninja are. And then I brought in Lycanroc and just trying to drill run the Aggron. But unfortunately, he brought in the uh, Shin Ninja, which is interesting, because, you know, Lycanroc, Rock-type, and I like bug types, but uh, I go for the Swords Dance expecting maybe a Protect right there or a Switch, but he actually Toxic me, so I was like, oh, well then. I expect to Protect over here, so I'm going to go Swords Dance again, but no, he did not Protect, so I'm like, okay then, stop playing me like a fiddle, goddammit. So he hits me with an x -Scissor, and that does a chunk of damage to Lycanroc, so the next x -Scissor will knock me out, but I decided to just, you know, try and still rock this and break its Folk Sash so that maybe Scyther can knock it out with Aerial Ace, uh, but unfortunately he Protects right there, so I'm like, alright, you know, I'm going to keep my Lycanroc and maybe Healing Wish it later with my Mesprit. So I switch on Lycanroc and go into Scyther over here. So this Shin Ninja is a little bit annoying, um, but I can still deal with it since I do have Recovery on Scyther with Roost, and like I said, I have Healing Wish Mesprit to just bring back Lycanroc. So it's not the end of the world. It will be the end of the world if I got, or if I already used my Healing Wish. And uh, then he can just keep switching out against Scyther. So I need to get my Rocks up too, as well, because then Shed Ninja would just go down to the Stealth Rocks. So that's like, my next play. But, uh, yeah, he actually lets me hit him with the Aerial Ace right there, so break his Folk Sash, so that's pretty nice. He just, I guess, maybe expecting me to want to go for a Swords Dance or another Roost or something like that, or maybe expecting to switch out again and go for U-Turn. That's understandable, I guess, you know, predictions, because he was predicting me with the Lightning Rock, but now uh, he got the prediction wrong, and now he brought an Aggron as I go for the Roost, just get some more HP, and now I can just U-Turn off on Shredder over here, as I'm pretty sure I can outspeed Shredder, <laughs> since... Even if he's like Choice Scarf, I think I'll speed aggro. I think so. So, anyways, I brought in Savali as Savali. Hopefully, we'll take a head smash if he wants to go for that. But um, he just goes for the Stealth Rocks. I mean, I am running a lot of HP and defense on my Savali Water, so maybe I could live a banded head smash if he was that. But it looks like he's probably not banded since he ran Stealth Rocks. I like to run like maybe Lumberry Aggro or something like that on like rocks. So I go for the Party Shot as he brought in Shininja. Can't do much to it. I don't have Toxic or anything like that. So I brought in Mesprit over here as uh, I got rid of his rocks and uh, now I can try and get my rocks up. So he has the X-Scissor, that does absolutely nothing to a max defense Mesprit, because that's Mesprit for you. And uh, yeah, I get my rocks up. So if he switches out Sheninja, he's going to go down and I guess he just wants to Toxic my Mesprit, so that's fine. Mesprit um, will Healing Wish later on, either way, if I if it comes down to that. So, I bring in Rapidash over here as I expect him to probably click x Wizard again, and luckily I have that Flame Body, and Flame Body burns that Shed Ninja, and down it goes. Look at all that red HP. 1 HP, 30% chance to burn it with Flame Body, and yeah, comes in handy. Now, some people do like Flash Fire on Rapidash to be immune, but there's not too many Fire types in Peeve, so that's why I like Flame Body, and it actually comes in handy over here against the Karakos that Leonardo is going to get burnt as well, and also, I guess he has a... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme team because he has Splinter as Agron and Leonardo as the Karakosta. So that's pretty cool. So, Karakosta being burnt is amazing as now, even if his shell smashes, it's not going to do too much as Volley Water at all. So I went for the Grass Pledge, but he makes a nice play going into Shadow right there as Shadow will resist it and take it. And unfortunately, though, his Shadow is slower, which is surprising since I'm not running max speed to Volley, but hey, that's fine. I guess he's running a bulky chat out because he takes out Surf pretty well, tries to substitute, and I mean he is bulky because I guess he has leftovers, but he could be a fast chat off with substitute and leftovers. I could run that. It'd be cool. I mean Boom Burst does a lot either way, but unfortunately he cannot substitute when he's at that low of HP, and I knock him out with Surf right there. So now comes the Leonardo, and I could just Grass Pledge that. Looking at it, the rest of his team, he gets destroyed by Silvali Water with Grass Pledge and Surf. Like, there's nothing he can do. So. Yeah, Karakosta goes down to the Grass Pledge four times weak to it, 
This next mon comes out, Shredder. It's gonna go down to the Surf. He's not gonna live it, because the Volley Water is pretty strong with the Stab Surf. And unless he's gonna be, I don't know, Pasho Berry or, you know, max special defense, maybe he can live that, but not today. So his last mon is Float Cell. That's already weakened from earlier when I hit it with that Grass Pledge, and it should go down to the next one. Unfortunately, he misses a Focus Blast right there. It wouldn't have knocked me out, but it would have done decent chip. Maybe it could knock me out with a critical hit. That could put him in the fighting range, but, um, uh, I don't know, to fight back, but I have Lycan Rock for a Cell Rock, so it's not looking too good. Maybe if he had Aqua Jet, he could come back, but he was Life Orb, so I don't know if he has enough hits to knock out the rest of my Pokemon. So, GG versus him. Next up, we got versus Crystal, and Crystal looking at her team. Looks like maybe um, a Shell Smash, Omstar, maybe Rocks, Spikes on there. Uh, Clefairy could be Calm Mind, Skunk Tank, maybe Defog. Spirit Tomb, I don't think it knows Calm Mind. Uh, I like to run that a lot, like max defense, max HP, Crow Tome, I think that's what it's called, Crow Tome. And then probably Rapid Spin Played All, as it's pretty nice for, with a Scyther, as Scyther does not appreciate rocks. And it, it makes a lot of sense since maybe the Omnistar has a lot of hazards on it, and uh, you just want to Rapid Spin and not get rid of your hazards. So I lead off of Savali Water, as it looks a pretty nice lead versus her team. It can Party Shaw, it can Grass Pledge, it's almost dark, it can Surf a lot. But um, she leads off a of spirit tomb. I think uh, this was the second battle. The first battle we had, she led off of something different. I think I led off of Solali Water, the same two battles. But the first battle was disconnected because good old DS um, has horrible connection. So I can't wait to do some Wi-Fi battles for the Switch because we're gonna have that nice Ethernet cable, and hopefully we don't have any disconnections. I'm praying. So um, I brought in Crabottle on the spirit tomb. I get Willis, which is a little bit odd. Uh, if you're watching, but I do have Facade on the Scribonable, and Ice Hammer, as you guys see, does a ton of damage already to Spirit Tomb. But unfortunately, the Spirit Tomb does have the Pinch Berry, and it gets to num 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 on that, and that recover all that HP. So, um, yeah, that kind of sucks. But at least Spirit Tomb is not going to be able to doing much damage to Scribonable, unless it's packing Psychic. Because, like, that's the only move that can ever run to hit a Fighting type for at least chip damage, but Psychic, nobody runs that. But, Brought in the Clefairy, as Clefairy um, takes a bunch of damage from that Ice Hammer, since, you know, Iron Fist and Life Orb, Max Attack. I'm actually Brave Nature, no speed, and zero IVs and speed, which is actually bad. I should need, I need to run speed on this, like, no, take off the HP, put speed. So, um, that's advice for you guys. So I went for Facade, expecting another Soft Boil. Kind of risky if she did want to click Moonblast, but I kind of expected she would click Soft Boil. As now, I want to go to Mesprit and uh, maybe get my Stealth Rocks up as she pulls a switch into Spirit Tomb, which is understandable as Spirit Tomb would be immune to the Facade. And uh, we'll take Ice Hammer as well, since as you guys saw, the Ice Hammer didn't do over 50%. So goes for Pursuit. I have that Clover Berry, does absolutely nothing. And then I'd go for the U-turn. She clicks Pursuit again. Does decent damage now, but Mesprit does take that as a max defense. So I got my Rocks up looking pretty nice. And now I want to bring in Rapidash as Rapidash should easily claim a life over here with Flare Blitz. So, packs a Sucker Punch, gets a nice burn right there, but it doesn't really matter since Flare Blitz would knock it out either way. So, yeah, I guess Flame Body is just uh, there to burn the Spirit Tomb for no reason. <laughs> so, Clefairy comes out, which is odd because Clefairy will go down to the Flare Blitz. Maybe she wants to put me in range for something on her team uh, with recoil damage. Maybe put me in range for Stealth Rocks if she does get them up. So, um, maybe she could have kept it for later on and maybe uh, soft boiled or something like that, but at the same time, Clefairy was pretty low. I don't know if she would have um, a chance to do that. Maybe she even thought Clefairy would live, but it's not gonna live. So, I decided to just Flare Blitz the Skunk Tank coming out, Penelope, as it tried to defog, but I decided to just click that because even if she went for Sucker Punch, hey, that's a chance to burn him, Flame Body, so I'll take it. You don't want to touch a Rapid Dash. I mean, you learn it from Ash from the anime. Don't touch a Rapid, it'll burn him. I put those gloves on. So, I brought in some volley water. Unfortunately, Skunk Tank is faster and gets the defog off, so down goes my rocks. And uh, at least I get to knock it out. So, in comes Claydol, which uh, I'll easily just hit it with a surf. Does over half, which is pretty nice. And she gets the rocks up, which is kind of bad for my Scyther. But I do have defog on my Savali, so maybe I can just defog away those stealth rocks, to be honest. And I just go for another surf. She doesn't have a two good switch into Savali. I mean, Scyther could switch in. If it's a violate, just roost off the damage, but I'll just parting shot out into like Lycan Rocket. I should easily flip a hit, even if it's Brick Break and stuff like that, but uh, I am slower than Scyther, but 
Never mind, I'm actually faster than that. So that's a one slow scyther. I mean, naturally, Savali is slower. I mean, I am running a bulky Savali as well. So, pretty interesting. But at least I get to bring in like Rock. I was actually kind of scared if she clicked Brick Break right there. But minus one attack scyther, maybe it could live Brick Break. But either way, I'm up for the Swords Dance, which is pretty nice because now um, Lycan Rock could not take any initial damage coming in, and I can go for my Z move, and I don't want to miss. Uh, as you guys saw, I lose games when I miss Stone Edge, so not gonna miss today. I got the plus two, or plus one Scyther since I uh, party shotted it, and down it goes. Decapitation is gonna get splintered, storm sharded. <laughs> so in comes Lady Helix. Um, and Lady Helix will take this drill run since it does have pretty nice defense and pretty nice. I like the shiny of uh, Lady Helix. It's pink, so that's pretty cool. It does have weak armor, raises its speed, it does have white herb, so the defense, um, minusing the defense is gone. So uh, that doesn't really matter since I can just bring in Savali Water and Grass Plunge it. So even if she shell smashed, there is probably no way she could win unless maybe she crits or gets some hacks. That could be a way. Um, but I'm pretty sure Savali could live whatever the almost art goes for at plus two special attack unless she hits an ice beam freeze. That could be annoying, but at least she didn't go that route. She just wanted to just attack me. So knocking out Grass Pledge and that is going to be a GG versus Crystal. So pretty nice. Lycanroc doing more work as always and Rapid Ash Flare Blitz and stuff. Crabonable did a decent work this time around, but like usual, doesn't do much. So, I really wanted to try and use Crabominable, but I guess it just works more with a Trick Room team, or maybe if I run more speed on it. I don't know why I ran Brave Nature with max HP and like zero speed EVs. That's just a dumb part of my part. <laughs> so, next up, we have Legion as the last battle, and looking at his team, looks to be maybe like Banded Scarf Primeape, Scarf Ditto, Scyther. Could be Banded or Scarf. Um, could even be Swords Dance Firelight, Cradilia, I'm thinking could be the Ronker. And the Sand Slash, I'm thinking maybe Swords Dance Offensive Sand Slash, maybe Z Move as well. And the Electros, probably a Soul Fest, because I don't know if Legion would be running um, two Stealth Rockers, but um, he could, since it's not that bad. So, lead off with Scyther, as Scyther can just U turn on pretty much everything on his team, as he does lead off with the Electros. So, I was kind of scared of Electros, because if it is going to be an offensive Electros, which they usually are, maybe they're like max HP, max special attack, modest, or something like that. It can do a lot of damage to Mesprit with Voltrich. So I U-turn on it, get some nice chip, but luckily it just clicks knockoff, and Mesprit has that Clover Berry, so it does absolutely nothing. So that's pretty nice for me, as now I can get my rocks up and uh, just whittle down Scyther if he wants to bring that in. And looking at their his team, um, I was like, he doesn't have a Defogger, unless Scyther is the Defogger, so rocks is going to go a long way versus him. So if you're on a Primeape, I'm expecting a U-turn, so that's why I want to go into my Rapidash as I can hope for a Flame Body. 30% chance, but unfortunately, the U-turn does not, um, the Primeape U-turn does not get burnt, so that kind of sucks for me. Burning the Primeape would be amazing, because then it just, like, neuters it and it can't do anything for the rest of my team. So then comes Super Saiyan, I do not want to take an Earthquake, and, um, he can get his rocks up, so Flare Bliss does absolutely nothing to a bulky Sand Slash either way, since Sand Slash does have great defense. And also, looking at his team, Carbonable goes in. He has no switches versus Carbonable. Unfortunately, though, he brought in his Ditto and transforms into my Carbonable, and it lives the Ice Hammer, but it does over half, so that's some good damage. So it can't live another Ice Hammer if I bring in Carbonable again. So every time I bring in Carbonable, it's going to do some decent work. Uh, but I don't want to take a close combat, but just an off chance he clicks Ice Hammer. I'll go into Slog Water because I know I could take either or because I don't want to bring in Mesprit on Ice Hammer. It's just going to get knocked out, I'm guessing even though I'm max defense. So, I parting shot out. I could have knocked him out with Surf right there. Unfortunately, he stayed in, so I guess he expected parting shot. And plus, Great Dilly is immune to water moves, and yeah, I just don't want to click Surf against the Great Dilly. So, I guess he sees that, and he knows that I would want, not want to click it. So, I brought a Mesprit, as Mesprit can easily live anything, and it gives me a chance to maybe get Rocks back up, but he can bring in Sand Slash again, and uh, maybe Rapid Spin if he wants to do that again. So... He actually brought in Primeape, and now I'm thinking he's not going to click U-Turn because I showed Rapid Ash as a switch in before, and he might risk getting burnt again if he clicks U-Turn, and then that makes the Primeape neutered. So now he clicks the All Out Pummelin, which is interesting. I didn't expect that. I thought he would click Close Combat or Stone Edge if he does have that, but he clicked All Out Pummelin, so that's the Z-Mover, so that's pretty nice to know. Luckily, Mesprit lives on a sliver and knocks it out with the Psychic, so no him on Chan today. 
Uh, the reason I say Hitmonchan is because Hitmonchan lives a Psychic, but Primeape does not, so that's pretty nice. Primeape does not have that bulk like Hitmonchan does. So, in came Scyther. I don't want to take a, whatever move it's going to go for. It could go, literally go for anything and knock me out, so I go in Rapidash. Try and burn it if it doesn't want to attack me, but it goes for the Swords Dance, so that's a smart play. As now, it can do some decent damage with Quick Attack and uh, pretty much get knocked out by Flare Blitz, so down goes a Blade. And yeah, Scyther wasn't going to do too much versus my team since I had Lycanroc to easily just Cell Rocket, and I had Rocks up, and I, he would have to uh, just Rap Spin away. So he doesn't have Defog, but he does have Rap Spin, but um, Rap Spin is pretty nice to get rid of Rocks, so that's understandable. So, go for Flare Blitz as I just wanted to do some decent damage to Sand Slash, get a nice chip on there, maybe put it in range of a plus two Lycan Rocks, don't, um, like an Z. So, he gets his Rocks up, which is a smart play as, uh, you know, just in case I get knocked out by Recoil, he can get him up and just not waste a turn because Earthquake and Profit Spin won't do anything. So, I go into Somali Water. Unfortunately, he stays in. I could have surfed it, but, you know, create Dilly's in the back, so I don't want to, and I guess he saw that again. And uh, he stayed into Rap Spin. So I brought him Kerbonable, take that Rock's damage, which sucks. It's chipping me away. But he has no switch into Kerbonable, so I get the kill over here. So in comes Electros, the power line, and down it goes to the Ice Hammer. And I smash that thing, and I get a crit, which doesn't matter since Ice Hammer will annihilate it. He probably would even one hit KO it from full. But uh, now he gets to bring in his Ditto. And since he Rap Spin my Rocks away, that kind of sucks because now Ditto is not going to take any chip and um, defeat, you know. Guess to keep switching in Ditto when he transforms into a Kerbonable, that kind of sucks since I don't have a switch into Kerbonable. Um, just like he has no switch into Kerbonable <laughs> since I uh, already weakened my Savali and Mesprit was weakened too. So my two main switchings were kind of just like weakened. And I decided to sack Scyther right there since the rocks were up and um, yeah. I don't know, I was kind of hoping he would click close combat, but that's smart for him to click Ice Hammer as Ice Hammer would probably knock out Savali after rocks. So I defog right there, now I parting shot. On the Cradilly coming out, um, covers me going for the water move, but I'd rather just defog, get rid of the rocks since uh, Mesprit will go down to the rocks. So I bring Carbominable again as he goes for the Toxic. Now I get to claim another life with Carbominable as he has no switching, like I said. And uh, Toxic does whittle me down, but I do have Healing Wish and I plan on Healing Wish with Carbominable so I can bring it back to max HP. But he does have dual stealth rocks with Venus over here and the Sand Slash, so that is really bad for me, uh, mainly because I am really slow and I don't get to outspeed Sand Slash or Creedilly as you guys saw. If I was fast, if I was running enough speed to outspeed those guys, like I could do that. Um, fortunately I wasn't, now I regret not running at a lot of speed. I guess uh, my Carbonable was running zero speed mainly because to, I guess, counteract Trick Room Team's PU, but I barely ever played that in Walking Battle, so it was mainly for Showdown. So unfortunately I sack my Lycanroc right there as I don't have a switch into Sand Slash uh, since Mesprit goes into Stealth Rocks, so Zavali will go down to Earthquake. So I wanted to keep Crumb Honorable as uh, I wanted Healing Wish it like I said, but looking back at it I probably should have just sacked Crumb Honorable because now he gets to uh, just knock my Savali out. And what I was really scared of him transforming into Savali when I knock out Sand Slash because then um, Mesprit will go down to Stealth Rocks and Crumb will get knocked out by Surf. So. That's why I wanted to try and hope that he wasn't, I guess, Choice Scarf Ditto, but everybody runs Choice Scarf Ditto. It's like 99% Ditto or Choice Scarf. Um, maybe 1%, like like I said, 1% probably don't run Choice Scarf Ditto, but everybody runs Choice Scarf Ditto. So, my plan should have been to just sack Rabonable and then keep Lycanroc as uh, I can bring in some volley and maybe he wouldn't switch his, uh, his Stand Slash out and bring in Ditto, because that's what I was really scared of as well if I sack Rabonable if he uh, switched out Sand Slash into his Ditto and uh, his Savali would be Choice Scarf and will take the Surf and go for a Grass Pledge and knock me out. But he would be locked into it so I guess maybe he wouldn't go for that but at the same time his Surf probably would knock me out. So down I go to a close combat as he transforms into it and that is going to be GG because um, I won't be able to live close combat at all. But at least I get to uh, knock out some Sand Slash, that annoying thing. Kind of wish uh, I did not sack my Lycanroc though, because maybe I could have pulled through with Lycanroc uh, with its Z move, because it would do a lot, even though Sand Slash does like to run a lot of defense. I, I'm guessing it's probably like max defense, max HP, or something like that. So that's a GG to Legion. Kind of misplayed right there, but hey, that's fine. That's Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do your thing. And a comment question of the day is going to be Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Um, 
if you are going to play it, and I am doing a giveaway of it, you guys can see it on my Twitter, and I uploaded a video of it, which one would you choose, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, and uh, are you guys excited about it as well? Uh, I know I asked that before, but um, I really want to just, you know, ask it again and see what people say. Because we got to get that hype going, because I am going to live stream it, so be tuned in for that. Because it will be cool to uh, see live chat while I'm playing it. And uh, there is a lot of leaks going on as well, but I don't know if you guys want to get spoiled. So, I'll see you guys next video. Peace, peace.